Grindrod Asset Management and the Plexus Group recently announced an agreement to merge their respective asset management businesses, including Plexus's global asset management domiciled in Hong Kong. The merger will see each business bring in excess of 4 billion rand of assets under management. For more on the company's investment strategy, Paul Stewart himself, head of asset management at Grindrod Asset Management, joins us in the Johannesburg studio for a change and not in Cape Town. Good, Good to see you in Thank person. You very much. Nice to be here. How is the merger going? Uh, well, it's very early days still. Um, obviously, a merger always entails getting uh, the people moving in the right direction, and uh, so far, so good. Um, we just busy working, getting the signage up in the office in Cape Town and, and all those types of things. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work still to do, but from an, uh, from an investment point of view, we're gradually getting everybody aligned, um, you know, doing, doing the right things, putting the right people in the right places. And, uh, you know, I think in the next two to three months, we will be through that process and, um, and looking forward to that, uh, you know. So uh, and now, I, and now no. because you gave me the look earlier, I'm not going to ask a question and you're just going to keep quiet. All right, well, keep well, quiet. We've got to continue with the conversations that we've just ended with. But there's a particular question that I want to ask Paul as well, because he's very close to John Maldon. I know you speak to him quite often. Yes. And uh, I'm just interested in, in his views on the market at the moment and how he sees things. Is it a bit of a trick question to... Not at all. I mean, you know... John He's a well-known personality and a very, very astute thinker. And Priya uh, Duplessis yeah. obviously mm. has indeed, is very well indeed. for and, uh. and, you know, John's actually just recently had his annual uh, conference mm. in, um, in the States, uh, which, um, you know, my colleague Priya Duplessis attended. And uh, I, think, I think John Walden has always been... A fairly sort of bearish on mm, the world and he's, mm. he's obviously very US centric in mm. his in his view and you know he's an economist so he f he looks quite deeply into the labor statistics mm. and those types of things but you know I think I think generally speaking and this is the impression I have I've got sort of recently having been to the states too and speaking to people broadly across the uh, across the the spectrum is that the the foreigners are slightly less pessimistic about the states funny enough mm. now you know they've mm. been through they've done a lot of the things right they gradually coming out if there's four or five different indicators that are starting to look positive i mean the jobs numbers very recently weren't that good but if you look at a whole lot of other areas particularly corporates lots mm. of cash a high nature of individuals have got lots of cash uh, that's going to be redeployed gradually over time and 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 so i think they're less negative mm. about the u.s well perhaps it's just a relative play mm. compared yeah. to Indeed. the rest of the world Indeed. the u.s looks like a shining and, knife. and in fact i would Actually, you know, from a from a Grinnell asset management point of view, we'd actually probably largely agree with that view. That uh, you know, the the centre point of the world, mm. the, where the potential black hole is, uh, is obviously Europe. Mm. And uh, you know, from previous discussions that we've had, and I mm. think listening to you from earlier on, you know, it, it's a huge risk, and one certainly can't you know mm. ignore it. But somehow you just get the sense that that policymakers mm. have to sort this mm. problem out at mm. some point in time. Mm. We know that there's nonsense in mm. Spain and, mm. and Italy is another risk, but you know, I, I somehow feel that we'll muddle through we'll, mm. we'll, and, and you know, I can't see depression 2.0 occurring in the world. Mm. I mean, it's obviously a risk, it could happen, but, and, and I get the sense from, from many people internationally that that's, that's sort of their view. People are very concerned about China. Um, you know, whether China grows at, at eight and a half or seven and a half percent, mm. Does it really matter? They've got three and a half trillion dollars of net reserves. Mm. They will grow at whatever they want to grow at. Mm. And so, um, you know, I, mm. I, I think you must be very cautious. Uh, you know, we would certainly be looking at, at yield assets. We must be cautious, but not overly pessimistic. Exactly, exactly. I mean, over pessimism is really a self-defeating. Mm. You know, if if everybody gets deeply pessimistic, it can really end up in a, in a, mm. in a tragic situation. And, and I don't think we're anywhere near that. I mean, we we're certainly better off than we were in in the credit crisis and the eye of the storm mm -hmm. in 2008. We've come a long way, we know what the problems are. Um, so it's, it's really a question of how these problems get resolved. And, 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 and obviously, you know, our view would be um, the burden of, of, of reflating the world mm -hmm has to be shared amongst, amongst nations mm -hmm. of the world, particularly the developed world. And, mm -hmm. and you know, emerging markets have slightly different you know, characteristics um, and will probably do better over, over long periods of time. Um, 
but you know we're still going to struggle. It's going to be a stop-start thing for the for the next eighteen months to two years. Probably. And how do you and how how have you positioned your global equities or your global sorry portfolio accordingly? Well, well um, we've had quite a lot of, uh, mm. of fixed income in the portfolio, okay. but the way we actually have looked at fixed income is is um, you know looking at, at at safe spreads. So looking at at good quality, mm. high quality corporate names in, mm. in, in, in mm. bonds, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, state-backed entities, mm. um, you know, too big to mm. fail entities that you know that if problems hit mm. the, the, the developed market mm. governments are going to back those institutions where you're getting very nice yield mm. pickup. Mm. Um, globally, and has that worked well for you? Yes, it has. And, and in fact, we've got quite a close relationship with PIMCO in that regard, mm. and that's very okay. much the sort of PIMCO oh, yes, thesis right, right now. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly, you know, on, uh, uh, on the area of, you know, prefer EM over, over developed markets, mm. you know, Brazilian bonds, Mexican bonds mm. versus, you know, the same area of the yield curve mm. gives you a much better mm. yield than, than some of the developed market bonds. Mm. So, you know, uh, we've certainly had fixed income in the portfolio. And then, uh, you know, in, in terms of equities, you know, we, we, we use largely the fundamental index methodology. So it's a very value orientated mm. style. And value has been cotted out over the last <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although value yeah. is starting to, to yeah. come into its own. Gradually. Mm. And, and, you know, we, mm. I heard you guys talking in the previous interview about, um, you know, so the, the industrial sort of versus resources. <laughs> exactly. You know, mm. it's, a, it's so glaringly obvious, but you just, you know, you know that there's risk to commodity prices, but. I think there's much more risk if those commodity prices fall, as people suggest. You know, what will be the catalyst to cause commodity prices to fall? Well, the highly rated industrial shares will probably fall, fall even yeah, more. Well, I agree, um, yeah. So you know, yeah. I, I think you have to be sort of realistic about yeah. these. Um, about these I think that was the mm. risk that mm. Alvain pointed out is that if if mm. foreigners uh, are scared off from our retail story, mm. it's going to be tears, mm. tears. Mm. But it will be tears all along. It'll put tears right across. It'll hurt our financials. It'll hurt everything. It'll hurt well. resources. Mm. They'll fall Indeed. hugely. But they don't seem to be scared. You know, they're not. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> no, they, they're uh, coming in uh, heavily. Uh, uh, well, you know, if you uh, the, their single largest risk, perhaps at the moment, is the is the currency risk mm. because on a on a yield basis, but our assets look so attractive on a, on a relative basis. Paul, the one thing, you know, when the rand went from seven seventy to eight sixty, I panicked because I thought, hold on a sec, if they're valuing their stocks in dollars, yeah. they're taking a little bit of a caning. They might be influenced to sell out. And I expected, I braced myself for a sell-off as people withdrew, worried about the valuations. Forget it. No, <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything. Didn't happen. <laughs> no, yeah. Didn't happen. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, 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 mm. I, I don't know the exact number today, but um, mm. uh, the last I looked, the rand was sort of trading at eight twenty-five or eight thirty. Mm. It's quite a big movement on, on the day. <laughs> so you, know, you can get 15, 20 cent moves in, in one day. So to try and put a uh -huh. peg in what the currency is going to be, you know, <laughs> don't even try. Uh -huh. Let's throw something else in here because of John Malden and obviously Priya's association on that front, your stance on gold, because mm. with his bearish stance globally, Malden is a big believer in the yellow metal. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, from a, uh, we've been sort of pretty positive on gold for, for a long time. And actually in the Grinrod scenario, we haven't quite worked out that is one of the discussions, uh, you know, on the table. Uh, our, our, our view of the world is very yield driven. So we tend to, mm. and you know, obviously gold has no, you yield. Know, you're taking a one way, <laughs> you know, it's a directional bet on the price. But, um, you know, from just recently, the RAND price of gold has, mm. it's actually been a very nice mm. sort of, mm. A shock absorber in your portfolio over the last yeah. couple of weeks as the rand's blown out. Um, asset prices fell, you know, the resources fell 10, 10 yeah. 12 percent, but the rand gold price actually, you know, moved forward. So I, I think it's. But a this is still a discussion point internally now in, with the merger. Indeed, very much. But I, I, I think, and I, when I was in the States recently, I attended a very interesting presentation by one of the academics from one of the Ivy League universities who's actually done a, a long term study of gold going, dating back to the Roman times. And um, I mean, to cut a very long story short, he, he, he basically has come to the conclusion that any investment portfolio, diversified portfolio, should have in the region of 4 to 5% cool. in gold, mm. um, just as a diversifying mm. asset rather than um, you know, anything special, not taking mm. a bet in it. Mm. Um, <coughs> so that, that's interesting, and I, I think that's probably quite right. Mm. You're supposed to save me when I when I cough oh, off, I off air. Did you not see that transaction happening? You're supposed to continue talking. You're not a very good partner this evening or a very good guest. I did. Host. You saw. I can't you see. I'm, you wanted to keep I'm talking. I'm turned the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Our body language is off on this one. So, Paul, just in terms of where you think we're going from here, obviously 17th of June is, is key. We spoke about that with Alvain mm -hmm. a moment ago, saying that Greek election, you know, it, it depends on your risk profile, how you want to play mm -hmm. this one. 
a wait and see attitude, or are you going to miss? Are you going to miss out on an enormous opportunity if you don't play it one way yeah, or the I, other? I, I really. You know, I'm not clever enough to try and understand what the politicians inside <laughs> the, um, the European Parliament are going to uh, do. And you know, I think you have to take a pragmatic view of of, of the of the assets and the valuations out there. And markets are pretty good at getting these things right, slightly ahead mm -hmm. of the of the curve. So as long as the the yield and the valuation supports the um, mm -hmm. the entry into the asset class, um, you know, I, I would think that. Uh, we wouldn't probably change our view tremendously uh, one way or the other vis-a-vis uh, -vis the 17th of June. I mean, there's, there's some assets that we think are expensive. You know, domestic industrial s uh, stocks are, are one area. <laughs> um, We've got consensus yeah, on that tonight. Uh, and, and uh, you know, there's other things that, that are cheap. And, you know, uh, we still like listed property. We still like the yield mm. assets, you know, mm. pref shares, listed mm. property. Um, and, you know, some of the, some of the commodity stocks, you know, Anglo's Billiton, uh, some of the platinum stocks, mm. I, I don't think of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 I think just sensible diversification strategies um, and, you know, just close your eyes because we don't know what the European politicians are going to do. Mm.